Good morning and a very warm welcome to our 11 o'clock live stream service on Sunday the 9th of August. Whether you are a regular member of the congregation, uh, a visitor or even a casual internet browser who's just happened on us by chance, you are all most welcome and I trust you'll be blessed, encouraged and challenged by today's service. This week we're continuing with our summer series where we're looking at a number of the Psalms and this morning we're focusing on perhaps the most well known of all the Psalms and particularly those Psalms that we describe as being pastoral Psalms and that is Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, by way of introduction I'd just like to read some words to you that were written by a 19th century American Congregationist minister who was also a social reformer and at the time of slave trade was an abolitionist. Uh, his name was Henry Ward Beecher and thinking about all the life circumstances and experience that this psalm has spoken into this is the, what he said about Psalm 23. It has charmed more griefs to rest than all the philosophy of the world it has remanded to their dungeon more felon thoughts, more black doubts, more thieving sorrows than there are sands on the seas. It has comforted the noble host of the poor. It has sung courage to the army of the disappointed. It has poured balm and consolation into the heart of the sick, of captives in dungeons, of widows in their pinching grief, of orphans in their loneliness. Dying soldiers have died easier as it was read to them. Ghastly hospitals have been illuminated. It has visited the prisoner and broken his chains and like Peter's angel led him forth in imagination and sung him back to his home again. It has made the dying Christian slave freer than his master and consoled those whom dying he left behind mourning not so much that he was gone as because they were left behind and could not go to. Powerful words of one of the greatest psalms and we'll be hearing more about this psalm of course when Albert comes to speak to us a bit later. But now, as we begin our service, let's just join together in this opening prayer. Generous God and giver of all things, we rest in your loving and tender care, and we are revived, restored and renewed by your strength and encouragement. You go before us in life, leading us in pathways that are secure, without the confusion of becoming lost, aware only that we always need to follow you. And so we trust in your guidance and wisdom. As human beings, we know there will be times of stress when our body or mind lets us down. We know there will be dark times too, when life seems to be nothing but struggle. And it is in those times especially that we rely on your presence deep within us to guide and bless us. Grace giving God, you provide us with the tools we need for the tasks we face. And for this, we give you our trust and our thanks. Life giving God, you put out the welcome mat for us as we gather to worship you. You nourish our souls and bodies through your goodness and tender mercies. You heal our life's wounds and your generous love fills us to overflowing. You give us an honoured place at your table and invite us to stay with you as guests forever. You have promised that your unfailing love will stay with us always and for this we give you our thanks. Amen. So having committed our service to the Lord, let us now come together and worship our Good Shepherd in song.
Jesus will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on His pure delights, and I will trust in you. As we worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other and to God that we do not always live as we're called. It is in the act of confession, this time of opening our hearts, where we realise our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step towards wholeness and healing. So let's make our confession first in silent prayer, bringing before the Lord those times when we have failed him. Holy God, you know us better than we know ourselves, and you see us more clearly. How impossible it seems that we could ever hide anything from you, or even try to hide something, but we do. Sometimes we pretend to be better than we are. We do things we know will hurt others and act as though we are blameless, but we aren't. We are complicit and we are guilty and we are broken. So we ask for your forgiveness because you love us more than we can imagine and you can make us whole beyond our wildest dreams. And this we ask in the name of Jesus who came to show us the way. Amen. And so, friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure and we are included in that love. Know that we are forgiven and thus freed to love and to serve. Alleluia. Amen.
reading this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Whenever I think about the Psalms, a couple of things spring to mind. The first is being an eight-year-old choir boy, trying to get my tongue around some of the big words, whilst also trying to fit the, those words in before the chant changed. And secondly, Philip Rossiter, who was a choir member singing all 150 psalms in a day, raising funds for the church. Today we are thinking about the 23rd psalm. It has been described as the most prominent, the most loved, the most used of all the psalms. It is a psalm that comforts, a psalm that reassures, a psalm that can strengthen. Over many generations, people have memorised this psalm. Perhaps you too have memorised it. Or indeed, you may remember it from that wonderful television series, The Vicar of Deadbelly with Dawn French. An article I read in the Christian press recently made me smile. A Sunday school teacher once asked her children, how many of you can remember the words of the 23rd Psalm? As you can imagine, they were all excited. Several children raised their hands, including a little girl who was only four years old. She stood up and declared loudly, the Lord is my shepherd. I got all I want. She had the words mixed up, but understood the message perfectly. This psalm is attributed to David, who some think wrote this psalm as a young teenager, when he was shepherding his father's sheep, lying on his back in the lush green fields beside a gentle flowing stream. However, I think that it is far, far more likely that David wrote this psalm later in life, as the king, looking back over his sometimes difficult and tumultuous life, reflecting that God had been with him throughout his journey. So I wonder what is your favourite hymn or psalm? Because that's what a psalm is. It is, a, if you like, a type of hymn. And what do the words mean to you? I know for me, Psalm 121 is my favourite. Since this psalm is so familiar, we are in danger of missing the depth of its meaning. And because it's set in a world of sheep and shepherds, many of us miss its richness. There are over 200 references to sheep in the Bible. And to draw a comparison between us and sheep, would I suggest not usually be seen as a compliment because sheep are stubborn and prone to wonder. 
or would it? Let's look a little more closely at this psalm, a psalm of comfort, hope and grace, beginning with verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Placing our full trust and confidence in the Good Shepherd will result in a transforming existence. We need to eat, drink and rest in every respect, both physically as well as spiritually. God is the one who in Jesus gives us food and drink of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And come to me, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 4 goes on. He leads us to quiet waters. He restores and heals the troubled soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What wonderful words of comfort and assurance. The former Tory minister, Jonathan Aitken, writes about this in his book, Psalms for People Under Pressure. He refers to a conversation he had with evangelist Michael Green. Some of you will remember him from John Woolmer's day. Green was rushed into hospital after having a heart attack. As you can imagine, there was for a frenetic work around Green at the time. He was lying in the A&E department, lying horizontally with casualty doctors working on him. Looking up at the bright lights, he thought to himself, Green, this could be it. He realised he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And at that moment, he was suddenly filled with wonderful, warm glow of joy and peacefulness. God was with him. Verse 5 goes on with wonderful reassurance. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. If it is sometimes seems like the world is against you, and remember there was plenty of people who were against Jesus, this illustration is so encouraging. Our service of communion points to it. And when people use the words or actions that hurt, let's not lose sight of the future that is assured for all believers. A future that includes the heavenly dwelling promised by Jesus in John chapter 14. I am going to prepare a place for you. Verse 6 is then, if you like, the gift of hope. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For many of us, I suspect, during this uncertain time, life has many had has had many ups and downs, good and bad, sorrows and joys. I wonder then if somehow we could get off the roller coaster of life for a moment and look at the whole picture, then maybe we could get a proper perspective on life. God has made everything beautiful in its time and has set eternity 
in every human heart. David certainly experienced the ups and downs of life, but through it all he knew that the Good Shepherd was with him. So let us pray that the Good Shepherd will pour out his love and attention on all of us alike, and will care for each and every one of us, though we were the only precious living thing in his creation. Even though he knows at the outset that we might to all intents and purposes be a lost cause. For at the heart of God is hope. Hope in us. Hope in the impossible. Hope in the ridiculously impossible. And that, my friends, is grace. Amen. my shepherd he restores my soul he leads me by still waters he restores my soul surely your goodness and mercy are chasing after me all of the days of my life even when I'm lost in deepest valley I fear no evil even when the silence falls around me I know you hear me even when it feels like we're separated you're holding on to me Lift my head, you wipe my tears You restore my soul You draw me into your embrace You restore my Surely your goodness and mercy are chasing after me all of the days of my life. Even when I'm lost in the deepest valley, I fear no evil, even when the silence falls around me. I know you hear me. Feels like we're separated You're holding on to me Even when I'm lost in the deepest valley You're holding on to me Even when the silence falls around me You're holding on to me even when it feels like we're separated, you're holding on to me.
restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Let us pray. I love that opening line of the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Praise God for the gift of his son Jesus. Thank you for his life and all that it demonstrated to us of a new way to live. A life of compassion, of awareness, of recognition of everyone, no one of lesser or more importance. Praise God for the message of hope. He is our guide. He leads us. Thank you, Lord, for your word and that this word is living and active. I listened to the testimony of a young man whose parents were killed during the civil uprising in Burundi. The killers were fellow churchgoers. The young man turned his back on God until the day he met a young man who had reintroduced him to the Bible. And in Matthew 5, he read about forgiveness and God spoke into his heart. He recommitted his life and now leads a ministry reaching out to those who are poor and destitute. He sought out the people who killed his parents and spoke forgiveness into their lives. Praise God, he is indeed a God who leads us on the paths of righteousness. Praise God, because he fulfills his promises. He walks with us through, through our difficult and fearful times. Right now, in the current circumstances, he is with us. Help us to focus on him. Nicola Neoff spoke at New Wine this week of how the Lord met with her when she called out to him. She felt his presence, experienced his comfort and peace. You are with me in the valley experiences. Help us, Lord, to focus our attention on you, to be guided by you, to act as you would do. Help us, Lord, to roll up our sleeves and climb into the valleys with those who are struggling, to be prepared to pay the price and walk with them. And as the great shepherd is in the valley walking with us. Strengthen your people, Lord, to bless a scared world. Show us how we can have your peace, your love, your passion and your joy. Help us to remember we are more than conquerors in you. Today we bring you uh, people who are either suffering or undergoing treatment. We remember Bishop Peter as he commences his treatment. We pray for those who are on holiday that they are refreshed and restored, particularly for our Vicar uh, Jonathan and his family. We thank you for them, Lord. Pray that they will indeed be refreshed. We pray for Jill in her workplace and for those prisoners who are confined in, in a different way over this COVID period. And Lord, for the tensions and the uh, frustrations that it brings. Lord, bring your peace, bring your love, bring your compassion into that place. I pray for those recovering from in injury, like Jill, but also we include Debbie, and uh, pray for her as she returns home, uh, that she's able to concentrate well on uh, the rehab exercises. And we look to you with confidence for her swift healing and that you inspire her with confidence. 
for all that she faces. And for all those who care for others. We think of uh, Rose with Ted, Anita with Tom, and Lord Alison as she uh, cares for Iris and the other carers too. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us a heart of compassion for others. We pray for the children and young people currently on holiday, for those receiving results, for exams not taken. <laughs> um, Lord, for all of them that they have fun but feel secure and confident in this period. And pray for those who are experiencing financial hardship, or relationship difficulties, or anything else, Lord, that is brought about through all the difficulties of the, uh, the virus in this country and abroad at this time. And we pray particularly for those who are fearful, Lord, those who find stepping out the door a strange and a vulnerable experience. Lord, be close to them and help us as neighbours and friends to draw alongside. For the church, Lord, for our church, guide each one of us so that we may overflow with the good news of the Great Shepherd. We thank you, Lord, for churches like ours, like Dalting, opening their doors for prayer. Lord, may people go there and find uh, you. Find you, Lord. We just so desire for people to have an encounter with you, the great shepherd of his sheep. And uh, Lord, we pray for a world, a broken world, broken by disease, broken by uh, violence, broken by warring and broken by natural disasters. Lord, we bring you a world where we need to act as you would act, to be your people in difficult places. And just as a thought, to end this time of prayer, Lord. I just uh, read this week of uh, Paganini when he was doing an early recital, how during the recital, one of his strings broke, but he carried on playing. And I just pray, Lord, that, um, that we make your music sound for you. We may be imperfect instruments, but we want to resound the music of good news. Amen. Joy.
So as our service comes to a close, let's share together the words of the closing prayer. Draw me today into fresh encounters with Jesus, O God. Make me a servant of love so that others may know how much you love them and I may know how much you love me. Let me not be afraid of new pastures, whether they be green, or brown or parched. And as I pass through whatever the day's valleys, keep my head lifted up to the mountains from whence cometh my help. Never let me forget the people Jesus welcomed, the greedy and the great, the bad and the good, the respected and the cheats. And even as the world becomes more callous and chaotic, may we never underestimate your capacity to fashion the miraculous from the monstrous, even to make each one of us a choice masterpiece from the mire and the clay. Amen. And let's just say the words of the grace together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always, forevermore. Amen. Amen.